Hi, I'm Chris Wall, Chief Technologist at Rubrik, and welcome to another video with an engineering deep dive. So today I'm joined by Fabiano, welcome. And if I understand correctly, you were a technical director back at Data Domain, a professor in your past life, um, as well as a PhD in computer science, so quite a lofty experience that you have there. Now, how was it different working with Rubrik where you were building Cerebro compared to your life at Data Domain? The experience with Data Domain was an experience where I was able to work in a well-defined platform. The architecture was uh, kind of defined and you were constrained to that architecture. Mm. Whereas coming to Rubrik, it was more like an open field. I could explore uh, quite a bit and, and leverage this new era where everybody's interested in the cloud. Everybody wants to have data on premises and on the cloud. Mm. That was the main difference between the experience with Data Domain and coming to Rubrik. I like that idea, wiping the slate clean, getting a new start into a piece of technology. That makes sense. And so when you're working on Cerebro, talk about kind of the principles uh, that go into that product, you know, around data management and application mobility and things like that. What are the driving forces when you were constructing Cerebro and, and kind of how do they work? Yeah, I mean, there are a few principles that we were working with. And the very first one was uh, we want to build something that's detached from the over underlying platform. Okay. If you want to have data management across the local system across the cloud and have a single fabric managing that data, it has to be detached from what you're operating on. Mm -hmm. So that was the very first principle to design Cerebro. Uh, other, uh, a follow-on principle was it has to be software defined. Your mm -hmm. software has to be resilient to the underlying hardware, what it's working with. The third one was uh, we want the data to be mobile. The Cerebro layer had to be uh, agnostic to the location where the data is. So that was the three main principles that drove the design of Cerebro over time. No, that makes a lot of sense. And, and one of the things that I like and have been discussing a lot in the field is the fact that Rubrik is a declarative type model, meaning you tell Rubrik, hey, this is what I want you to do, and it executes your will. You don't have to kind of hold its hand and tell it step by step what to do. So how does that actually work under the covers? How do we take away all the complexity that's inherent in a traditional system and make it really simple and easy to do from a declarative model with Rubrik? Yeah, there's this whole thing about imperative declarative mm -hmm. model, right? The legacy architectures that tend to force you to uh, think in a procedural way. Yeah. You need to go specify, oh, I have this virtual machine. I need to go create a job for this virtual machine. This job has to run at this time. And then I, once this data is in my system, I need to go and set up another job to expire this data on a certain given amount of time. In Rubrik, what we wanted to do initially was, okay, why do I need all these things? I just want, uh, as an administrator, I just want to go tell the system, okay, I want you to take my data, and here's how I want my data to be in my end state, and you just manage it. Uh, a declarative pr approach makes total sense to me. And, and what's actually kind of under the covers within Cerebro? What are the components that build that product? Yeah, Cerebro consists of two uh, core components. Uh, the Blob Engine mm -hmm. and the Distributed Task Framework. The Blob Engine is where we manage all the data lifecycle. Okay. And the Distributed Task Framework is where we schedule all the jobs to uh, enforce the policies mm -hmm. in a fault-tolerant and efficient manner. Okay, so I, I kind of want to dig deeper on that Distributed Task Framework. So when I build a policy, we call it an SLA domain within Rubrik, and that's expressing you know, the RPO, RTO, that kind of jazz within the system. How is that actually getting enforced by the distributed task framework within the system? Yeah, the distributed task framework, it has two components. It has a scheduler mm -hmm. that's going to schedule the tasks, and it's going to uh, schedule and process all the tasks across the cluster. And we have the task maintenance, which is responsible for uh, you have an SLA, and an SLA, this task maintenance will look at it and say, oh, there is uh, uh, 10 virtual machines associated to this SLA. Now I need to create 10 jobs in order for this SLA to be met. And this, uh, there are 10 backup jobs, there are 10 uh, uh, replication jobs, and things like that. These jobs themselves are distributed by the scheduler across the cluster. So that those are the two core components. In addition to that, in the SLA, you can have this idea of priority then we'll prioritize workloads using the quality of service or QoS that we have built in the system uh, to execute those tasks that are more important for the moment so that the customer gets what they're trying to accomplish by just declaring what the priorities are in their policies. That makes sense. So that's where the declarative nature comes into effect. This is what I want you to do, and then the system does all the, the minutia, the little steps to make it actually a reality for you. Yeah, you got it, Chris. Cool. 
so Fabiano, we've talked quite a bit about declarative versus imperative, but really in your mind, what are the benefits to going declarative over an imperative kind of holding its hand type model with uh, a lot of the traditional backup and, and protection type products out there? Uh, to me, the main benefit that you get is the simplicity that you end up with mm. in a declarative, uh, in a procedural imperative manner, you would have to have people learn a lot of things about the workflows, a lot of things on how to specify those workflows within the underlying systems. And not only that, when you're an engineer designing for those systems, you're kind of attached to that um, uh, architecture. Okay. Uh, whereas in the declarative manner, you, you require a lot less cognitive load on the administrator so that the administrator can focus on the business logic now that makes total sense to me. Like, who really wants to go super deep into the technology when they could be working around what the business needs and ultimately learning other things within the ecosystem? So making things simple and declarative for the user makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, so I wanted to thank you, Fabiano, for your time to discuss Cerebro, the distributed task framework, and host another one of these excellent engineering deep dives. Thank you, Chris. It was a pleasure to be here with you.